Hey, this is Passy from Passy's World of ICT, the guy with the white hat, ready to help you excel with Excel. And today we're going to be doing column and bar charts in Excel. So we can make great looking bar charts, column graph. That's actually a column graph because it goes up like the columns of the Parthenon in Greece. Uh, and the bar chart, of course, is the one that goes across. All right, so um, with the video playback speed, remember I'm a bit of a slow talker, so it's best if you increase the speed. Uh, just go to the YouTube uh, player and there's a tools cog there. Click on that and go to playback speed and make it 1.5 or even 1.75 and you'll find the video flows a lot better. Okay, and also this is a long lesson. Uh, we're going to do everything we can sh possibly think to show you about column charts and bar charts. And so there will be an index timeline in the video. So if you want to jump to a particular section because perhaps you're only interested in making column graphs, well then you'll be able to find it in the index here and jump across to it. So what are we going to cover in this lesson? We're doing Excel bar charts and graphs. We'll be doing the Excel column charts and graphs. We'll show you how to format the scale markings on the axis because sometimes the axis across the bottom there, Excel doesn't choose the best scale for that. Uh, sometimes sorting data can make your charts look a lot better uh, and we'll cover that. Uh, we'll fix, there is this problem that if you try and graph some numbers like someone's, the height of people versus how many people you've got at those different heights or shoe sizes or um, things like that where you've got numbers and numbers in both columns, uh, Excel gets all confused and messes up and we'll show you how to fix that problem. Uh, we'll show you how to replace the columns with pictures so you can turn your column graph basically into a picture graph and make it look really interesting. Uh, how to use your charts for business analysis analysis is another thing and finally comparison charts won't be covered in this lesson all right we're going to have a whole separate lesson that's all about doing comparison um, bar charts and column graphs but that won't be today this lesson is jam-packed already with things to do so uh, we won't be doing that today all right, now the pre-learning, you need to have done uh, two of our previous lessons at least. So make sure you've done the Excel pie charts and graphs lesson, uh, where we told you a lot about how to format in different colors and things on your charts, which we'll be doing again today. And also the uh, sort part of this drag, copy, sort, filter lesson. Okay, because we're going to be doing some sorting. So it's uh, helpful if you've done that lesson previously. All right. So today we're looking at the uh, mainly at 2D column graphs. So these ones that go up and down and the bar charts that go across here. Okay, so we're going to be doing that section of the charts in Excel. And we'll already assume that you know uh, the things in this lesson. Now, if you want to see our full Excel course, just go to the Passy's World of ICT website and we've got the Excel beginners course here right up the top in a playlist and you can see what we've done so far. There's that pie charts one and there's the sorting one, but you should be doing these in order. So start at the introduction and then work your way through. By the way, we also have lessons on uh, Microsoft Access. We've got the uh, Southern Dog Club, which will teach you all about Access. So if you've been interested in Access, we've got a couple of courses about that. And if you want to get into programming anytime, we've got Visual Basic, we've got games in Visual Basic, we've got Python Turtle Graphics, and also some Python little games programming, and Adobe Animate, and Scratch, all right? So we've got a lot of different things, actually, uh, that you can get lessons on. It doesn't just have to be Excel, but today is Excel, so let's get back to Excel. All right, so the coffee sales bar chart, this is the first one we're going to take a look at. So bar charts are horizontal and go across the page. So we're going to have this uh, spreadsheet here that's got some coffee sales and we're just going to look at the different types of coffee, uh, cappuccino, latte, mocha and espresso and the daily and the weekly totals here that are for along the bottom. So we're just looking at this data and this data and not all the data in between. And we're going to make this nice little bar um, chart going across. We're kind of going to get it into coffee colors and we're going to have a gradient background and also change this scale across the bottom here uh, from what Excel chooses. So that's what we're going to do. Now the steps for doing that are that get the coffee um, bar chart spreadsheet from the lesson download. So if you go to the YouTube uh, description for the video, there will be links to uh, the downloads and you need the coffee bar start one, okay? 
All right, so that spreadsheet looks like this when you download it. That's the start one. And also if it comes up with this message to enable content or whatever in the yellow bar, just click that to enable content. If it comes up read only, just say no, you don't want it read only. Uh, then you should be good to go uh, with this spreadsheet. Okay, so let's go over what we're going to do first and then we'll jump across into Excel and do it and you can try it out yourself with the downloaded one. All right, so what we need to do, the first step is to hold down the control key. So we need to skip rows, all right? So first off, we just get our mouse pushed down and get this whole top row data that's indicated here, including that blank uh, cell just in there. So get that. And then you put your finger on the control key and don't take it off the control key, just leave it on the control key while you color in these ones as well and select them. So that way we can do these ones first and we can hold down the control key and do these ones second and we've skipped all the ones in between. So we've just got this data highlighted and it's all about using the left hand CTRL key on your keyboard. Then you go to the insert tab uh, up on the ribbon there and go to charts and just click on this one which is the column charts and we're going to do the 2D bar so we'll be selecting this one here. Now what happens after you select that is that Excel will make a basic kind of bar chart for you and we're going to make it nicer colors in a coffee theme and do things like that and we're also going to change uh, this scale that's across the bottom here put it in 20s instead of 50s all right and we're going to come up with something that looks like this with a nice gradient background on it as well. Uh, so we're going to work out, you know, how to change those 50s into 20. So it looks a lot better like that. All right. So changing this axis scale, we haven't done that in any lessons before. So that's something brand new we're learning in this lesson. All right. So changing the scale units to do that, what you need to do is you click on this. So all those scale units are highlighted and then you right click and you click on uh, the option for format access when this little menu pops up after you've right clicked and then it'll be in 50s here. All right, and we need to get it into 20. So just change that into a 20 and uh, then that should be all good and we should have it in 20s. Okay, so there's several other colors and formatting customizations we're gonna do. Maybe we won't do this exact one, but we'll make one anyway that's got gradients in it and got that uh, improved scale. So let's get to work. So download that Coffee Start uh, Excel and start it up. And we're gonna go across now and show you exactly uh, what you need to do in that spreadsheet. All right, so here we are in the spreadsheet. And like we said, first off you highlight that, then you hold down the control key and get these ones across the bottom. Then up the top here, we go to insert and on the insert tab on charts, we're going to this one, column or bar chart. So there's a little down arrow you click next to that icon and we want the 2D bar chart and Excel makes a basic bar chart for us, all right? And so there it is. Now, what we're going to do first is uh, let's change the background first. So make sure you're not clicked inside the chart on things. All right. You need to be clicked. Just have this outside border uh, selected. And what we're going to do is we'll right click and you need to then say format chart area right down the bottom here. And in the format chart area on paint bucket, we're going to go to fill and we're going for a gradient fill. Now it's done this kind of blue and uh, light blue one, but we're going to change that. What we're going to do is we're going to make this end of the scale a really dark brown. So we need to go to more colors and go to standard. We're going to get a really kind of dark coffee brown from here. Uh, like that one say and that's made that brown and our idea is to have the bottom part of it kind of a really cream color because we kind of want like the dark coffee going into the cream color so let's see what would be a creamy coffee color uh, maybe something like that perhaps even a skin color now in between what do we want to use we want to use some sort of brown color again so let's go to more colors and go to standard up here and pick some sort of intermediate brown color maybe like that in between now the blue one we don't want that so what you do is you just uh, push down your mouse and you pull it down like that and it goes away all right so you push down and pull down if you want to get it another one back again you just double click in here and it makes one for you all right and then it's just push and pull down to uh, take them away so that's sort of it but what we'll do is we'll change the direction so you've got all sorts of options here 
uh, for directions and things. So look, it's just a matter of playing around until you find something you like. We kind of want it uh, dark up the sort of top and maybe, well, we'll go with that one, getting lighter at the front, all right? Now, now I think in the original uh, one we were showing you, we just had a black here and a gray here instead, but let's go with this and I'm kind of wanting a lot of darkness there. All right, so that'll do for our gradient background. Anyway, you can do all sorts of things and mess around with that. Now we're gonna click here just where all these side ones are because we can hardly read them at the moment. So if we go back to the home tab, just get on the letter, the letter A, and we're just gonna change that to a white color. And likewise with our scale across the bottom, we'll make that a white color as well. Now remember that scale, we're not really um, happy with that being in 50. So click on it. Whoops, just go Control and Z or use the backwards arrow up the top here if you wanna go back. Uh, we've made a mistake there. So we've just got this clicked now, all right? So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna right click on that and go Format Chart Area. And I don't think I had those things. All right, let's try that again. This can be a bit sticky as to what you've got selected at the moment. So if we go Format Axis, we wanted that to come up. So look, it's a matter of clicking round until you've got the right thing and you'll know you've got the right thing when you right click and you can format axis. All right, now that's in 50s at the moment. So we wanna change that to just be in 20s there for the major units. All right, and if we click on that, uh, see how they've all changed to 20s now. So that's good. Now we could do with um, sort of some axis label there. So on this plus indicator here, remember we'll put in axis titles and what we're gonna put down the bottom here, first we might change it to white writing so we can see it with the letter A up the top. And if you just click in there, you can type. And I've just, uh, my keyboard's really tight here on this laptop and I just hit page down. Uh, but anyway, let's fix this up. This is number of coffees sold. Okay, and we need something nice for the headings. So up the top, we'll click in that. We'll click on the, uh, while well, we've got that heading selected, click on the letter A, that white color, and we'll have this is uh, weekly totals, let's say by coffee type, because we're listing them as a separate total for each type of coffee. So that's good. Now, if you want that heading bigger, you can just be on your home tab and just go to this uh, next to the font there and change that to be bigger. So yeah, it might look better like that. Uh, looking good. Now, all we have to do is change the colors of the bars. Now, if you click once on this, all the bars are selected. And if you go to the paint bucket and go to solid fill uh, and change the colors, they will all change color, okay? So let's just go back and have them all to start off with this kind of brown color which is very hard to see. So what we might do also do is go to border here and open that up and let's get a border around them that's kind of a black border. And perhaps if we go down here, we'll make it uh, one point big so we can kind of see it. All right, now black is kind of very harsh. So let's click on them again and go to the paint bucket border and perhaps uh, using this dark brown would be better. All right, that's kind of reasonable. All right, so latte, that needs to be uh, separate colors. So what you do is instead, you click on it once to get all of them, then click on it again and see how we've only got latte selected here. So we can go to paint bucket and what we can do is for the fill of latte, we'll get a different color for latte, all right? So latte needs to be a really kind of creamy color, uh, maybe something like that even, all right? So that could be latte where it's very milky. Cappuccino for the fill color of that. So we click on that and we can do that one separately. Uh, let's get some more colors there. You could even make this color kind of like that, lighter if you want to, just use the slider under custom. And that's sort of got our cappuccino. Now espresso, espresso coffees are really strong. So we need a very dark brown for them. And for the mocha kind of chocolate ones, uh, we need another different sort of color for them. All right, so maybe we'll go to standard and pick, try and get a kind of chocolate color that's different to everything else. Uh, perhaps that color. 
All right, so that's pretty good. And we can see all the differences. We've got a gradient background to make it uh, quite interesting. The other thing is you might put a border around the whole thing. So if you keep clicking on it, so you've only got the outside selected. Uh, that was where we did our fill with the gradient. So let's just uh, use this arrow to close that. All right, and go to the border and we'll have kind of a bit of a gray border and we'll make it really kind of thicker like that. All right, so now you can see we've got a bit of a board around there. Now this axis title, uh, it's pretty obvious they're different coffee types, so we don't really need that. So let's just click on that and delete it. Notice that the other axis label stays where it is, and so maybe we'll move that down a bit. All right, so use the arrow key, he says, try the arrow key. So look, we can play around with this for ages and ages till we uh, kind of get it the way we want it. Maybe you want that over here here sort of thing like that all right uh, but look that's basically our finished bar chart all right so we've got it there we've got it kind of in this coffee kind of theme with coffee colors and so that we're pretty happy with that and we can finish it now one other thing we'll show you which we're going to do separately in a more detailed lesson and we'll revisit again in line graphs and give you the full instructions is rather than have the gradient background you can put a picture uh, as the background uh, for these things. So what we do is we go back to fill and make sure we just clicked on this. So we've just got the outline. So there's our gradient. So instead of gradient fill, you go to picture or text fill. Okay. And now we've got a background picture we're going to use. So we go to insert here and from a file. All right. And then we can navigate to where all of our pictures are. So let's do that and get here into bar charts. See, we've got this uh, thing which we darkened in Photoshop. So that's another thing. Uh, you might want to sort of go into Photoshop and make it a lot darker and we blurred it a bit and we gave it a big dark vignette around it. But that kind of looks nice. So you can either have uh, your gradient fill like that, which is quite okay, or you can actually do picture fills as well, all right? So uh, that makes a, a really nice looking chart, all right? So we'll put that picture uh, in the download so you can get that and play around with it if you want. But we better get on to the column charts now. So that's bar charts done and done and done. And we've already done 18 minutes. So like we said, it was going to be a long video. So at this stage, you may want to take a short break um, before we do column graphs. Take a short break, get your uh, coffee's bar chart all looking good, maybe with the background picture in it too. And we'll be back after the break. Okay, so that's the bar chart done. So let's move on to column charts. So again, we're using uh, the column chart spreadsheet, which has this other data down here about the total. So what we've done there is we've uh, worked out, instead of working out the coffee type totals, we've taken days of the week and worked out for Saturday, added up 26, 42, 26, and 16. Now we didn't put the answer down here. We put it down separately because that way we can uh, select this data with the uh, mouse pushed down. And that can be the data that we can use to make the column graph. So if we had put the totals here, we wouldn't be able to actually select uh, the data as easily as having it separate down here, okay? So we did all this in a separate lesson, how to do totals. So we're not gonna go back through that bit again but this is a column graph where we've got the columns going up and down and this is one of the uh, Excel pre-mades it's nice it's got kind of shadows there and we've just changed it to have bright um, happy colors there and put a big gray border around it so I'll show you how to do all of that as well all right, so to make the initial chart, what we need to do is we just uh, hold down our mouse and select all that data. Then you uh, hit your insert tab up here, step two. Okay, second steps to insert the chart. You go to this one and we're just picking 2D column this time. So we're not using the bar, we're using the column. And then after you've picked that, Excel will make the basic chart type like this, and then we can get it nice colors and do all the things uh, that we were doing in the other part. So let's get across and now make this finished chart, show you how to make the chart in Excel. So this time you need the uh, coffee column start. So in the downloads, coffee column start, that's the spreadsheet you need to work with this time uh, so you can follow along and do this. 
All right, so here we are in Excel with our columns uh, start, coffee columns start spreadsheet. And like we were saying, remember the first step is to just push down your mouse and highlight these ones here. They're the ones we want to graph. Go to your insert tab up the top. We're doing these ones, just mouse over and it'll tell you insert column or bar chart, then push down on that little arrow. And we want the 2D column one and it's done that. But I've colored in the totals as well. And see what happens, you get this really big total one and the other ones don't look good. So that was wrong. So let's just delete that one off. Go back and redo our selection properly where we're only just going to do the five days that the coffee shops open and not the total. So don't do not include the grand total in here. We're just highlighting that. We just wanted to show you that. Uh, it's an easy mistake to make. And then we go to our column graph and that looks a lot better. All right. Now, uh, what do we need to do with this? Well, we need a chart title so we can click in here. So we'll go uh, daily coffee, coffees, sales, totals, totals. All right. Now Excel kind of had this nice pre-made one. So up here, if you're on the chart design tab, you can click on all of these and get these different chart designs. Now I've got to try find the one here. This is the one here that has the nice little shadows uh, of the bars. So I'm just going to uh, stay with that one and use that one actually. Now to change the columns like we were doing last time, if you click once on these, you get all of them. So just click again. So we've just got this Saturday one selected. Then if we go right click, we could even just go to the fill here. And I can't remember what colors we made them now, but let's make Saturday kind of a nice blue. Uh, Sunday, we just right click and you can just go to this fill here and we'll make that red. Oops, it didn't take it. Fill. We want red. Okay, double click on the fill to make sure. Uh, this one here will just click on Monday twice so that it's isolated on its own. You could go format data point down here and go to your paint bucket, go to your fill and do it this way like we were doing before. Does the same thing. Uh, this one here we want, I think we want green and purple. So let's get it on its own and just right click and use the quick one. Now here we might just go to uh, more fill colors and just get that really nice kind of bright green like that. And this last one's going to be purple. So let's right click, just go on this down, uh, fill down thing and make that purple like that. And that's looking uh, quite good. And we don't need a scale or anything like that. You can read these numbers, except we can't read the yellow one. So if we click twice on that 106, uh, we need to change the color of that. So that's just on your home tab with your good old letter A. Uh, we could make that, ooh, let's make it kind of a light gray like that. And maybe this, uh, yeah, let's do the green one as well. Uh, it's a bit hard to see. So maybe if we make that even a dark green, perhaps. All right, so uh, then I think we can read all those totals. And that's pretty much it. Now, just that border around, remember, just have the outline clicked only. So click on it. So you've only just got the outline and then go to your border. And what we were using there was, I think, a gray border, maybe this one. And we were making it really big. All right. So with this width down here, we were just uh, pushing that right, 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 right up like that. Uh, maybe not that far, maybe about kind of five point like that. All right, so that's that one finished. All right, and once you've got a graph finished too, you can just have it like that and you can uh, copy and paste that into a Word document or into a PowerPoint or elsewhere. Or if you wanted to get a copy of it and save it, remember there is a good old uh, snipping tool uh, where you can just start up the snipping tool and go new. And then you have to be very careful doing this, but you can kind of just push down your mouse and trace out what you want, uh, which is kind of like that. And then we can do file save as and just save that somewhere uh, like this previous one we saved here uh, as a PNG or you can change that to JPEG or you can just go edit copy and then you can paste it into uh, Word or PowerPoint. So the snipping tool is quite handy as well. All right, and I think we've shown you that in previous lessons. So that one is done and looking really nice. So let's get on to the next thing. 
All right, so the next thing, um, sorting data before graphing. So here we've got our good old Cyril Cyber Store, which was in previous lessons. And here the data is unsorted and the totals are just kind of random. And what's happened here is the totals are sorted from uh, biggest down to smallest, okay? And when they're sorted, so the smallest ones are at the bottom, the biggest ones are top. It'll just show you biggest sellers first and then shows you how it decreases uh, with the different types of items you're selling. So rather than have it all over the place like this, it might be better to kind of shuffle around the items by sorting these totals, uh, which we have done in previous lessons. So remember, the way you do that is you highlight just the data, not the headings, just this start stuff here which is circled up uh, in pink and then you go to your data tab go to your sort and if we zoom in here you'll have to use totals because the column name we want to sort on is totals and we want to do it from largest down to smallest okay so that gets our biggest one at the top the portable storage and then we get down to our littlest one power supplies at the bottom all right, so we have got an Excel Cyril Start spreadsheet, so you can have a go at doing this. So uh, let's jump across to Excel and just do some sorting of data before we graph it. Okay, so here's the Cyril Start spreadsheet. Now, we need to get this sorted because they're not in the order yet. We want the smallest one at the bottom and the biggest one at the top. We want to do um, this sort of reverse sorting on it. Now, how do you do sorting from our previous lesson? color in these headings as well and we'll see what happens so we go to data and we go to sort and we want to sort on total so yeah we do have to actually color in the heading so if you're not getting these if you just got um column sort of a b c d or whatever and you haven't got the headings make sure you go back and color in the headings as well so we want to sort on totals and we want to make them from the largest ones going all the way down to the smallest one. So that's the order we need to set and go okay. And then it's all looking good, all right? So we've got from 968 with the portable storage down to the others. So this one here was the unsorted one. So if we color in uh, the data, all right, sorry, let's just do this one, all right? So to do the actual graph, uh, we're just gonna color in this data here select that by pushing down the mouse and we're going to go insert and we're doing a column graph and that of course is doing all sorts of weird things like that that is not the one we wanted all right so this is a control and skip one remember so we need to get the heading we want the items, okay? Because we had items across the bottom, didn't we? And we had totals. So we've got to grab the items and then we've got to hold down our control key and get the totals. So these are the two things we need to select, these two columns. Then we go insert and fingers crossed. Yeah, this time it gives us the sort of thing we want, all right? And you can see that it's going from the biggest ones here down to the smallest ones. Now, if you resort it, so let's just uh, go back to here. And remember, we need to do the headings as well. And if we go back to data and we sort, but this time we're gonna make it smallest to largest like that and say, okay. Notice that it because our uh, column graph was hooked into this, uh, it changes automatically and now it's kind of this sort of thing. So maybe if you want to see it this way with, okay, what's my lowest sellers going all the way up to my best uh, selling item here? Uh, you could do it that way. So when you change the data sort uh, afterwards, that's okay because it's going to uh, redo the column graph for you, which is a really nice feature. Now with this one, if you try and column graph this, See how we've got that underline thing? I think this is going to mess up. Let's see what happens. If you include those underlines and hold down your control like that and go insert and then do our column graph. Okay, see, it's put those underlines in as well, which is a real problem because it doesn't look that good. All right, so let's just delete that. So what you'd have to do here is delete that whole row where the underlines are. And how you do that is just click here at number five and right click and go delete. And we'll be covering this, I think, in the next lesson on line charts anyway. Uh, but 
Remember, if you want to delete a whole row, just click on its row number so the whole row is highlighted all the way across and then right click and go delete and that'll take that out. Now, in sorry, I keep thinking in rows, I don't know why. Uh, we want that column and of course we want those totals. Oh, I need to drink more coffee before I make videos so I'm wide awake. All right, so that's the one there uh, where they weren't in order. So I think for something like this, this having them in order from biggest to smallest or smallest to biggest just works better. It's just something you can do with your column graphs and you need to be aware of. But something we can do is move along with this lesson and that's what we'll do right now. All right, so we've been going a long time. You might want to take another break and just come back. Remember there's the index timeline, so you can stop whatever you want and then you can come back. Uh, try out the things we've done so far on column graphs. And I think we're in the, the home stretch now of the lesson and soon uh, we will be finished. All right, so we are in the home stretch here and a problem with the numbers chart. All right, now if you want to graph this data, we've got the player height of basketball players. Some are 178, some are 180. Then we've just got it going in five. So we round off their height to the nearest five. We've got 10 players here who are 195 centimeters tall. Not many really tall guys. One that's 215 centimeter. Uh, some short guys, so 178 centimeter guy and a couple that are 180. But when we go to graph this, it goes uh, all over the place really weird. What happened here? We've got the big shock faced emoji that we made in Adobe Animate. So if you want to learn how to make those, you can make them in Adobe Animate. Uh, but look what's happened. We've got the player heights kind of happening, but we've got all the number of players things down here as an orange set of bars. So it's trying to compare the height, this one with this one and messing all up. And there's a couple of ways we can fix this problem. So this will also happen if you're doing things like people's shoe size and just putting the number of the shoe size in and how many people have that shoe size. If you're doing their big long arm span, I remember in year nine maths, we used to have them measure their arm span and graph all those things because actually your arm span is usually the same as your height, which is just a bit of mathematical trivia for you. Uh, two fixes at work. Uh, one thing is if you just put units on the end, so if you call this 178 cm for centimeters, or if you're in the US uh, have feet and inches, put FT an inch on there, uh, then that'll fix it because then Excel will think this is a word and it'll set these up as categories and do this as the frequencies for how high it should make the columns okay. The other trick is if you don't want to have the units in there, you edit each one of these separately and put a single quote mark okay which is kind of down near the enter key on most keyboards but the single quote in front and press enter now excel will make these will make these green triangles but just ignore them but if you do either of these methods to fix it up so that they're not just straight number against number then it's going to work out all right and then everything's looking good so 190 most of the players were 190 because remember we could see here 12 of them were 190 so this is kind of like your histogram really uh strictly speaking if you're a maths teacher it's not a histogram because the bars can't the columns can't have spaces they've got to be all jammed up against each other like that but it's the same sort of idea all right and maybe one day we will make a video about how to make histograms in Excel, but certainly not today. We can replace the columns. Now, this is an interesting thing. You can turn a column graph into a picture graph. And we'll be doing a more detailed lesson on picture graphs uh, later on in our course. But let's just show you something today which you can play around with and have a go at. So the first step is you need to just click on one bar. So remember that they all get selected like when we're changing colors. Just click on any bar so all the bars are selected. Then right click and go to format data series. And in format data series, go to the paint bucket and you want picture or texture fill, okay? And down here, make sure it's set on stack because if you don't set it on stack, it defaults to stretch and just makes a really ugly, big, long, kind of stretched picture. What you want is the stacks of pictures on top of each other, like a picture graph. So make sure that's on stack. And once you've got uh, that's set up that that's on stack, then you can click the insert button. When you click the insert button, I uh, go from file is what we did here because we had a picture of clip art we've got from the web that is a basketball uh, with a clear background around it. 
All right. Now, if you can't get one like that from the web, if you get one that's got a white background, look, just Google, just go to YouTube and search for uh, Photoshop Make Transparent Background. And there'll be plenty of videos that show you how quickly in about three steps you can make a background transparent and then save it as a PNG or a GIF in Photoshop and get you a transparent background one. So you should be able to do that yourselves. We can't give you this one. This was a free clip art one, but we're not allowed to just distribute it or then it's copyright violation. So we can't give you that as a download, but you can easily find uh, Google for basketball um, ba basketball clip art and you'll soon find plenty of basketballs in the clip art and find a free clip art one that you don't have to buy. Uh, now, replacing the columns with the pictures and then what we'll have is that all these little basketballs will go in there. Now you do get kind of little half basketballs here so we can reach up to exactly 12. I mean, it's not perfect, but that's kind of made a, a, a lot more interesting graph here. So it's important to set that stack so it does a stack of basketballs. Otherwise it just does a big stretchy one that doesn't look good. So just get your clip art from the web. Remember, just uh, search YouTube. There's plenty of videos how you can quickly make Photoshop or other picture editors, make it have a clear background and just select one column. If you do uh, select just one column at a time, you can actually make each picture in the stack a different picture, all right? Which might be good if you're doing a graph on kind of transport types available for holidays and you had bus and you had train and you had plane and you had, uh, cycling tour or something you want to have little planes stacked up on each other or you want to buses stacked up on each other uh, you can do each bar column separately and you can do this for bar charts as well the same thing actually uh, just you can click on each one separately and insert a different picture but we're going to have a whole lesson on that and not spend uh, too much time today on it now there is a start excel so we'll just show you quickly all right, so there is this uh, basketball start one which you can down get from the downloads and that'll have uh, the column graph we've made. Now you'll have to get your own picture of a basketball, but like we said, the idea is to just click it so that all of these columns are selected like that. Then right click and we need to go to uh, format data series and go to the paint bucket and go to the fill. And you can see at the moment we've got that orange fill, but just go to picture or texture fill, but see, it's going to do stretch and you need to make sure that's on stack. All right. And then you can go insert then from a file and we'll just find our way through the depths of the hard drive here to the Excel course, to the column charts. And here's our clear one. We've got our clip art. So we just go insert and yeah, you can see there it's changed them all uh, to basketballs. All right. So that's basically how you do that one, making a picture graph from a column graph. All right, let's get this lesson wrapped up. So we've got a couple of challenge tasks for you. So there are more things you can download. You can get the ice cream shake start uh, spreadsheet, which will look like this. We did this in a previous lesson. And we're just gonna look at the statistics here, the maximum, minimum, and average. So you need to highlight that column and a row across just those three bits, and then just do the ice cream spit and then you should be able to insert a bar chart and get the style that puts the uh, numbers totals on there make something like this from what we've done in our lesson should be able to do that now to do the shakes remember you'll have to highlight the top headings but then you'll need to hold down the control key and skip down to these pink ones and just get the pinkies uh, then right click insert your bar chart and get that and we can compare ice creams with shakes so you should be able to do that challenge task two you can get the uh, mandy merch start one and remember mandy was doing merch sales at festivals and we looked at that in a previous lesson and we're just going to highlight this these items here and make this graph all right and highlight these ones here and make this graph so mandy wants to know how much does she sell of each item over the course of a festival here so we got the totals for how much she sold over the whole festival and how much money do they, those items make when they sell and then she's got because she wants to uh, limit her stock down she's got too many items she has to you know pack up into the van and carry with her and order and organize so she's thinking okay things which aren't big sellers i'm just not going to sell them anymore i'm just going to stick with the things that are good and only sell those at festivals so what are some stock items some line items here 
here that you can scrap. And this is how we use spreadsheets for business analysis, right? So when we get the figures and the figures are in here, uh, she decides she'll look at the thousand dollar mark. So anything which isn't earning a thousand dollars over the three days in sales, they're the items she's going to scrap. And you can see thongs here, uh, both in the number of sales and how many dollars they're worth, uh, isn't a big item. So she's going to stop selling thongs and she wanted to look at also ponchos, okay? Uh, maybe it'll rain and there'll be a rush on ponchos, but most festivals, the weather's actually okay or people have bought their own uh, rain gear with them or they buy an umbrella instead. They don't want to wear a poncho. So ponchos haven't been good even on the days it's raining. So she's going to scrap those as well. So by doing this business analysis, she was able to decide that no, batteries and torches as well look they're getting a bit over a thousand there okay and definitely keep selling t-shirts and singlets uh, and caps because look there and hats because everyone wants to buy some clothes to wear around at the festival showing the name of the one of the bands their favorite band or something like that so they're the items she's definitely keeping glow sticks she sells so many of them everyone wants to get glow sticks for the night time and look they make reasonable money two thousand dollars so she's definitely keeping glow sticks so this is how rather than trying to look at all those numbers here it's a lot easier to look at some charts and do your business analysis and your thinking by looking at charts and that's why excel is one of the favorite friends of business and you can excel at your business and excel at excel because that's what we're teaching you to do and i think we've taught you enough how to do today now if you want one of these fabulous t-shirts of course we don't sell them and we don't get affiliate or anything from this but we just thought we'd let you know you can go to ebay and go microsoft xl t-shirt and get them from france or the uk and there's this other one here as well that you'll find on ebay so the next steps what we're going to have next is uh, our next video is going to be on line graphs and then we've done uh, the three main graph types we're covering in the beginners lesson we've done the pie charts we've done the bars we've done the columns Next lesson will be the line graphs. And then after that, there will be another lesson coming up that's going to be how to do the comparison graphs, okay? Which is another great tool for business analysis as well. So this has been a long video, but we've tried to uh, teach you everything you need to know about column charts and bar charts and graphs. So give it a big thumbs up like. And so you can find out when the next lessons are coming up in our course, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. There's a little icon in the bottom right hand corner of the video where you can do that right now. And we'll see you in the next lesson.